Hello and thanks for joining me. Today I want to talk to you about value and of course value comes at all sorts of price ranges and there is a lot of sales going on at the minute but does that mean you need to buy everything that's out there just because it looks like a bargain? Um, I think the money expert did say when we were watching his program the other day it's only a bargain if you were going to buy it in the first place so if you're buying stuff just because it's been reduced probably not the bargain you thought it was but here's 10 of my worst things you could buy in my opinion for your van so we'll start them off shall we at number 10 here we go stickers <laughs> love them hate them Oh my God, um, yeah, some of the stickers you can get for the vans do leave a lot to be desired. And of course, you know, if that's your bag, happy days, enjoy it, but uh, it's not for me. So yeah, anything with adventure written on it, I think <laughs> it's probably not one that I'm gonna wanna see on my van or anything like that. I think, um, Let's go down the uh, less is more route for stickers. You know, some of them, they have their place. Of course, we have branding. Yes, so we're, we're guilty of stickers as well. But yeah, let's do less is more. So stickers. Um, I will put a little caveat on that. I do quite like the stickers of where you've been. You know, so if you've been to Cornwall, to Norfolk, to Suffolk, to Scotland and everywhere else in between, a little discreet sticker sitting somewhere is probably quite a nice little memento. But I used to um, put them in the door shuts and particularly on the sliding door. So we used to fill up the door shut of the sliding door with a few stickers of where the van had been. What's coming up next? Number nine, um, cheap seat covers and steering wheel covers. One, they can be quite dangerous. Two, they look ugly as sin. Oh, again, value comes at different price points. If you can find me a cheap set of seat covers that actually fit properly and look nice, well done. But there isn't very many out there. We've put seat covers on our vans before and they do really tidy it up. But I'm talking seat covers that are really sub 50 quid, you know, um, I think to get a decent set of seat covers on your van, you are well north of 50, uh, sorry, well north of 50 pounds, well north of 100 pounds. You know, I think the ones that Transporter HQ sell are now probably about 130, 150 maybe. Um, and they're decent, you know, but they are seat covers and there is only so much you'll ever be able to do with them. They will never follow the contours like they would if they were a proper machined cover that replaces the original fabric. So, there are definitely good ones and there are bad ones. And I would suggest that the less you're spending, the worse they will be. So again, seat covers, not a great one. And steering wheel covers, especially when they're quite poor fit in, uh, can be quite dangerous. You know, they will move around uh, and you know, that's not good. So seat covers and steering wheel covers, definitely holding that number nine position. So, Number eight, where are we? Um, electric cooler boxes. So there is a price point at which uh, a good cooler box will be a godsend and they are great. The cheap cooler boxes that are just uh, permanently on, so they're not great for the van because they will deplete the battery really, really quickly particularly if you don't have a leisure battery system in your van, they will absolutely destroy your van battery and you're probably gonna come back to a flat van. The other thing to bear in mind, if they're not a compressor style fridge, is you are probably gonna be running them flat out to try and maintain a cooler temperature. And a lot of them will only go 20 degrees below ambient temperature. So it doesn't take a rocket scientist to work out if it's summertime and it's 28 degrees outside, you are barely staying at eight degrees, which is probably the warmest you'd ever want a fridge to run at. 
Ideally, you wanna be sitting down at the five. So anything warmer than 25 degrees outside, you are not gonna have a great, you know, cooler box experience because the stuff that's in the cooler box is not staying chilled enough. You get it in a vehicle without any airflow, so it's warm inside the van, it's warm inside your car, you know, it's 30 degrees ambient temperature outside, which I think we did see a couple of times this summer just gone. Um, it's probably gonna be closer to 40 degrees in your van, very warm. That cooler box is gonna be running at 10 degrees, 20 degrees, you know, it is not gonna be chilled enough to keep food fresh. So not only that, you can go and spend like nearly a hundred quid on them and it's a complete waste of money. So unless you're gonna be using it winter time, um, no, steer clear of them. You wanna be looking at compressor fridges. So compressor fridges are the best, either a portable unit or a proper fridge mounted into the van. But not everyone can do that. So obviously the portable ones do have their place and they're brilliant, but they need to be a compressor style fridge. So yeah, do check what you're buying when it comes to fridges, because the electric ones that are just running constantly aren't that brilliant. But there we go. So number seven, non-blackout blinds or curtains. You're gonna regret that because you're gonna be getting up really early in the morning. <laughs> that's, the only, that's the easiest way of explaining it, isn't it? If you don't have blackout blinds in your van, then in the morning, when that gets light, particularly the summertime, you're going to be awake. Early start, so yeah, blackout blinds, imperative to a good camper stroke camping experience. So blackout blinds, blackout curtains, obviously our preference is blinds, you know, you'll know that through our build, but curtains can be quite practical but get decent ones. Again, you know, value comes at a certain price point with these and the blackout ones that are nice and thick, have a little bit more of a thermal property. And of course, you know, they are gonna be a lot more you know, light blocking than what the cheap ones are. So buy carefully with some of those. So number six, suction cup blinds. So while we're still on a blind theme, yes, Suction cup blinds, oh, one of my pet hates. We had one um, really nice thermal blind, super. You know, it's got like a reflective back in on one side and a really nice sort of thick wadding in between and then like a gray material the other side. And you could take the suction cups out, turn it round, you know, so you could have summertime, you could force the sun um, to reflect away. So you'd put the reflective back in facing the window, so therefore it would bounce the rays off. Good idea. And then winter time, you'd put that the other way around so it kept the warmth in the van. Sounds like a brilliant idea, doesn't it? And in principle, you'd think it would be fantastic. Only it came with the worst suction cups that we've ever experienced. And of course they go hot, cold, hot, cold. And within a couple of uses, they're toast. They're absolutely rubbish. Not only does it leave horrible rings all over the inside of your windscreen, um, we were running this one uh, on our crafter. So big windscreen, so it had about six suction cups all holding this thing on. So lots of mess, you know, lots of licking and sticking onto the screen. And it was useless. You know, we bought three sets of replacement suction cups from the company that we got the blind from, which will remain nameless. But, you know, three sets later, every single one of them failed after a couple of uses. So they are pants. So get something else. Worst case scenario, yeah, you're gonna to have to run with it. But if you can get something else, particularly for transporters, there's loads of different options. So yeah, do something different because they're awful. Really, really one of my pet hates. So bringing us down to number five, exterior lighting. So there's good and there's bad. There are some lights out on the market. So when I say exterior lighting, I really do mean like headlights, tail lights, indicators, that kind of thing. So there's a few of these out on the market at the minute that are very low end, quite cheap. And we've seen a few on transporters now that we've been following for a little while and they are not bright. You know, the tail lights on the back of them, very, very dim. And then when they go to break, they're about as bright as the original tail lights would have been. So they're not great. So again, be careful of what you're buying. There are some 
very low end products on the market and you also stand the chance of failing your MOT. If these things aren't e-marked, then you can fail the MOT. And that's the same as putting LED bulbs in your front headlights as well. Yes, they'll be lovely and bright. They're probably gonna have a really bad beam pattern. So you're not gonna see that well because the beam pattern will be all over the place. Um, unless you're running headlights that are designed specifically for LEDs. But again, be careful because they will fail the MOT if the tester realizes you've put LED bulbs in the headlights which the van would have never have came with. Camping stuff, number four. Camping stuff can be quite expensive. So traditionally, I will say, be careful of stuff that's earmarked as camping because you generally tend to pay a bit of a premium for it. And there's sometimes you really don't need to. So some camper specific stuff that really doesn't need to be camper specific, just sees a bit of a hike in a price because it's got camping written on it so be careful with that you know you do then end up paying camping tax on some things that won't but so this is split so four and three are probably are linked so four is be careful of wasting your money on camping specific stuff when you can go and get something else that isn't particularly camping specific and it does the same job but number three is putting traditional plates and cutlery in your van so why would we say that Plates particularly and glassware and cups and things like that. One, you stand the chance of breaking them because they will break quite easily. If you're putting like ceramics into your cupboards and they're not all pinned down and they're not all nicely arranged in there, you're probably gonna end up with loads of chips on your plates. Uh, and glasses will, if you break hard and everything's moving around inside the cupboard, well, you can kiss them goodbye, can't you? Because the glass is just gonna break. So be careful with that. Plastic you know, um, cups and beakers and, you know, you can get some really nice wine glasses and pint glasses that are made out of plastic. So they're really durable. Some campsites won't let you on with glass, particularly festivals. So they will want you to do a declaration as you come into the site and they'll ask you if you've got any glass on board. Now we've never been checked, but also we don't really have glass on board. So be careful with that one. But plates are a really good one because they just break you know they're not designed to be in a camper van so horses for courses so number four like we said non-camper specific stuff can work very well number three obviously on the same vein some things that aren't designed for a camper work really badly so just be careful with those two they they kind of go hand in hand bringing us down to number two so these ones are getting sort of to the sort of more serious end of it, aren't they? So number two has got to be one of the things we've done the most of last year, lowering kits. And that's not our lowering kits because we only tend to fit, you know, the high-end stuff. So Bill Stein, Ibac, you know, really good brands. KW is another good one that we've put on a few of the vans and cars that we've done. But we have seen so many broken springs and bad lower end kits this last year that, oh my God, it's keeping the scrap guys busy because we're constantly changing suspension and chucking the springs away. So many poor and cheap quality lower end kits just don't last on a camper van. And it's mainly the rear springs that break, occasionally the fronts, but mainly the rears because the cheaper ones generally tend to have too many coils on them. And what happens is when they're lowered, then those coils are constantly touching each other. So they're constantly rubbing and you get a thing called coil lock. And that is causing metal fatigue in the springs. And then before you know it, a couple of the loops of it have actually shattered, broken. And then either if you're unlucky, fell out of the van and hit the thing that's behind you, or if you're lucky, They've disappeared out somewhere, never to be seen again, or the bits of them are in there and we end up fishing them out. So we can show you loads of what we have changed last year. And again, it's price point, isn't it? So value comes at lots of different price points, but I would always recommend you buy a decent quality lowering kit. Yes, you can go for springs on their own, which is a budget way of doing it, but it's not my recommendation. You wanna change the shocks at the same time. Ideally, if you go for a coilover kit, that's gonna give you the most flexibility. 
but this is really steering you away from you know the the bad things so cheap lower end kits with standard shocks and standard wheels and tires it's just going to give you a really bad ride and only look marginally better than what it did before so you're better off leaving it as it was so that brings us to number one which is going to be probably the most controversial one that you're going to see me talk about and this has been the worst purchase that we have made i think ever so bad is this product that I, I really wish I wouldn't have bothered. A customer approached us and really, really wanted this fitted into their van. And we've seen them before. We've had vans turn up with these before, but we've never really got that close up to them. So I thought, you know what? There must be something really good about these. Um, so I'll get one so we can try it. We can test it. We'll put it in the van and we'll get the customer one at the same time. So we bought two together and his was a problem because he had electric sliding doors. I haven't told you what it is yet, have I? So, uh, door stores. The worst thing, I think, somebody has come up with an idea of storing crap into the side of your door, which is probably the most risky place you're ever gonna put it. So yeah, door stores, my number one hate and worst product ever. You know, there's quite a few manufacturers doing them now. I'm not saying one's better or worse than any of the others. I think they're all rubbish. They, they are not a great product. It's a small hidey hole for storing some of the smallest things that you might have in the camper van. And dare you even try and get something big in there, then you're going to pro fall properly foul of it scuffing the side of your van. So we had a fabric first aid kit that I thought you know what that'll be quite good it's soft if it does fall against the paint it'll be okay so it's not going to get hooked up onto anything um I think what have we got in ours we've got a foot plate that hooks into the um striker of the door so you can climb up and then get onto onto the roof of the van uh they're quite good um so we've got that in there that jingles so that's not brilliant so not a great storage area for that I think we've got some sun cream that just lives in there because it's nice and flat and perhaps some cloths. Um, other than that, there's very little you're going to be able to put in those three storage pockets of that door pocket store thing. So yes, we put a first aid kit in there. So it's a Volkswagen first aid kit that comes as standard with, I can't remember whatever vehicle it was that we bought and it had this little um, fabric bag with first aid kit in it, quite nice. Um, so we wedged it into the, one of the pockets and we've been using it since summer. And when I was looking at the van the other day, I'd already decided that I hated this door store. Um, it scuffed the paint. So then we've got to polish the paint because it's ruined down the side of the van. And this is a fluffy little bag, you know? So God help you if you put something serious in there uh, and it really did scrape down the side of the van because it's going to ruin it. I think they're a really dangerous idea. If you've got an open style van like a combi, I can see the advantage of putting one on the driver's side if it's not a sliding door and then perhaps having some storage in there so you can have like mobile phones sitting there while you're charging up, you know, that kind of thing. But otherwise, I think they're hateful and really dangerous and you're just going to damage your van and there's a picture of one that's got an umbrella in the bottom of this door pocket i can't even find an umbrella that will fit in it so unless they've had their umbrella custom made to fit in this pocket we've tried i think half a dozen umbrellas and the standard sort of either smaller one yes a tiny one will fit in there obviously but the standard sort of you know one person decent size umbrella don't fit they're too long golfing umbrellas absolutely no way way too big um i don't know what this special umbrella is perhaps someone else could link me to this product so we could actually use one of these useless pockets um for storing something practical but yeah so there we go i'm afraid that last little bit was a bit ranty because i can't express to you enough how much i hate it it is still in the van oh and by the way we can make them fit a 6.1 if you're really desperate for one yes 
and you don't need a claw hammer to fit it into the van, which we've seen somebody do on another video. That's pretty shocking. You know, if you're fitting a plastic trim with a claw hammer, <laughs> perhaps you need to reassess your toolbox. But um, yeah, if you do really want one, then yes, you can make it fit a 6.1. Um, but no, what they don't tell you is that you cannot, oh, cannot, sorry, you cannot fit one to any van that's got soft closed doors or auto doors because the door motors are in the way and they don't list that on their website. So again, if you've got soft closed doors or auto doors, you can't fit them because uh, there's too many gubbins behind it and they're bloody useless anyway. So don't get one, complete waste of time. If you've inherited a van with one, then yeah, Good luck finding little knickknacks to fit in there. Please don't put anything big in it. So there we go. Thank you very much for listening to my rant. I'm going to put some pictures on each of the little um, points that we went through from 10 to 1. And uh, you can tell me what the worst bits were uh, on your van. If it's had any mods that you've just desperately had to remove uh, because they're just like awful. Uh, and again, you might have your ideas on what you think was a good mod or bad mod. Tell me I'm wrong. You know, I, um, I like to hear what you think. And we'll look forward to seeing you in the next one. And I promise you it's going to be a bit more positive and I'll be less ranty about it. So, But remember, as Martin Lewis says, it's only a bargain if you were going to buy it in the first place. So yes, there might be a sale. And yes, it might have 10% off. It might even have 20% off. But you weren't going to buy it in the first place. Then it wasn't a bargain. So there we go. Thanks very much for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Take care.